Hello everybody, welcome to Coding with Tom. Today we'll be creating a drawing up with gestures. We'll be adding random figures. We will be able to move them. When pinching, we will be able to enlarge or shrink them. And when doing a special gesture, we will dismiss them from the view. We will start from scratch with a new app for this one. Okay, our first gesture will be on top of the view of the canvas view controller and it will be a UI tab gesture recognizer. Now, when the gesture happens, you need to pass in a selector and to be able to use a function inside that selector, we need the add objective C annotation. made a mistake here. It's actually in a number of touches. That's the number of fingers needed. It's number of taps. So we're going to be able to tap twice. So let's tap here twice and we get the print. Now let's move on to our shapes. The first one we're going to create is a circle view. For our circle, we'll just draw something using UI Bezier path. To draw a circle, we just add an arc. The center is going to be the center of the view. The radius will be half of the width. Uh, the starting angle will be zero, and the angles are in radians, by the way, so it's going to be two pi to do a full loop. And we're going to set the red color to fill in this time. For now, we'll just add that circle in the middle of our canvas. Let's see if our circle is drawn. Let's tap twice. Oh. Now we get this square because the view is not set up properly. Because this setup has to be done for every shape. We're going to create a super class shape that all of our classes will inherit from. So what we need to do here is in the init, we will call a setup where we will add some special things to our view. So one of them is the background color needs to be clear. That's why we had a black rectangle. The other one is we're setting opaque to true. And the content mode is redraw. Let's also set a stroke for our circle. Something weird was happening and I made a mistake and realized that the center that we are using here is wrong. The center is the middle of the frame, not the bounds. So our circle was being drawn outside. So instead our center point will be using the bounds. We will use the mid, mid X and mid Y. Let's try with this. Now when we add the figure, notice what's happening first. A black line is being drawn from the middle and our circle is getting cut in the edges. To fix the line in the middle, we just removed the move to center. That wasn't necessary. 
and to fix the beam cut we just reduce the radius so it doesn't use the entire half of the width it uses almost half of the width and now you can see our circle is being drawn correctly and now we'll make it so that every time we place our finger on top of a shape and drag it on the view we'll be dragging the view for that we'll use ui pan gesture recognizer so in the shape when we initialize it, we'll add this gesture. To actually drag the view we need to be constantly switching the center and for that we're going to use the location of the gesture meaning where the user is uh, placing the finger and let's try running with this one and let's try dragging and it works now notice something let's tap on the edge and the view switches to the middle of the mouse where my cursor was pointing. To do that, we need to compensate with the offset when the user places the finger. So before switching the center, we'll actually look at the state of the gesture. If it began, meaning it's the first time we're calling this, we'll set the offset by comparing the, the center of the shape with the place where the user has placed his finger and then we apply that offset to the center each time we modify this Let's try with this. And now the view doesn't center to the cursor, we're just moving it with the offset. Looks more natural. Let's now proceed to create the other shapes that we're adding. The next one will be a rectangle. Before we move with this, let's also add to shape a color. So we'll be able to change the color of each shape. Now in our circle, instead of just hard coding the color, we use that color of the shape to set the field. The stroke will always be black. Drawing the rectangle with UI basic path is pretty straightforward. We apply the margin so that the uh, stroke is not cut off by the borders of the view. That's it for the rectangle. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but when we add a shape to the canvas, it is actually not in the center of the view. And that's because that we're using the center as the origin of the shape, and that doesn't work. For that, we need to displace the origin by half the width and half the height. You'll also change this. So we're not creating a circle, nor will it be sequential the creation of shapes. We'll just generate a random number for now it's going to be between one and two since we only have two shapes, a circle and a rectangle.
We will also have a random color each time. For that, we will have an array of colors and we will ask for a random element. Right now we are adding squares, so let's add a third variation of our shapes, which will also be the rectangle, but with a different width and height. Next will be our triangle, which will be an isosceles triangle. The triangle will be our fourth shape, so let's add a now the random number moves between one and four. Let's run again to see our triangle. Hmm. It is not being generated, and I don't believe it is just bad luck with the random generator. Oh, I see. We were just moving the point, we're not adding lines. And now I missed moving the point first. The only thing missing now is the bottom edge of the triangle. Let's now add another gesture to the shape for pinching. So when we pinch on a view, we're either going to enlarge it or shrink it. We already have a gesture that supports this UI pinch gesture recognizer. Now in our gesture, what we are going to use is the scale. So that's how far apart the two fingers that are pinching are. Since we will be increasing the scale each time, we will store the previous scale on a variable. Just like with the pan gesture, when the state of the gesture is began, we will just set this scale. Otherwise, we'll be adjusting the scale. So we get the difference between the previous scale and the new scale. We adjust the size, that is the width and the height of the bounds.
and then we apply this new size to the frame. Let's see how this looks. Okay, let's add this one. To pinch, you hold option and just use these two fingers. And if you want to move those two fingers without spreading them more apart, hold down the shift key as well. And then you can move the two fingers as I am doing right now. Now, we seem to be having something wrong. It's shrinking too fast. And when I'm spreading the fingers apart, it should actually be enlarging. Also notice that it's not getting center. So it has the same origin, but it's enlarging to one side. That also doesn't feel natural. So let's fix this. Okay, so the first thing is the pinch was having the wrong effect because of um, I am doing the subtraction with the previous scale. So let's switch the add to minus. And then the change is so drastic because I'm not constantly updating the previous scale. So after calculating the new size, I need to update the scale. Let's try now. Okay, so now when we spread the fingers apart, the view enlarges. And when we pinch, it shrinks. I need to still fix the fact that it's, see how it's growing or shrinking with that offset? So let's fix that so that it is always centered. Just like we did with the pan gesture, we need to calculate the offset. This time we're going to calculate it using the new height and width that are being the outcome of this pinch. And that's the offset that we will apply to the origin. Actually scratch that. We're going to apply half of that offset to the origin. That way it will always stay centered. much better. For our last gesture, we'll make it so that when the user taps two times with two fingers, we'll clear the view. Now for this, because we're removing each sub-view, let's create another view where we will be adding the shapes. This will be the canvas. And this is the view that we're going to add in our canvas view controller.
and that's our canvas now let's actually color the canvas red for now so you can see the entire view and that's the canvas let's have it clear and our canvas is the one that's going to have the gesture to add views Now that we have this ready, let's add the gesture. So for this, the two gestures for adding and clearing will not enter in conflict because of the number of touches. We'll add one for adding the views, meaning double tapping with one finger will add a view, and double tapping with two fingers will clear the views. Let's add some views. And now let's double tap, double tap and we have the view removed. That was a little bit simple. Let's add an animation so that the views, before being removed, they move out of the view. Now, how are we going to animate this removal? So we'll use the center of the view. Depending on the center, it will determine if the view goes to the upper right, upper left, bottom left, or bottom right corner. So calculate the offset with the center and the origin of the view, which is just a frame of the shape. And then we calculate that offset by subtract, subtracting these two. Then to the view we apply transform with cg affine transform we'll just apply a simple translation and what's going to be the translation it's just going to be the offset and we'll multiply it by a number let's try multiplying by 20 and see how this looks to animate this uh, transform we'll use UIV animate with duration. In the animation, we will apply the transform and in the completion is when we will actually remove the subviews. Let's add some views and spread them out. And there we have our animation. And that was all for today. Apple's library of gestures is very powerful. With the properties of UI gesture recognizer, you can do a lot of things don't have to do any custom gestures yourself. Because our views are drawn with UI Bezier path, they are very easy to scale up or down. And adding animations for the removal was really easy since we just use CG Affine Transform with a normal translation. And then we just use UI view animation to animate that removal. That was over today. Bye.